judge a car dynasty on its spread of abilities, its affordability and its relentless consistency, then the BMW 3 Series surely has to go down as an all-time great. Ever since the first generation replaced BMW's 02 Series all the way back in 1975, it's tough to think of any swing and misses from the Munich brand. That's made it a car that's always been in demand, so how do you know which one to buy? There's loads of generations to choose from, but for this video we're going to focus on the sixth iteration of the 3 Series, often known by its internal name, F30. But before we get on to the ins and outs of this model, make sure you subscribe to the Auto Express channel, and if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to click on the bell icon to get notifications as soon as new videos go live. On to the F30 then which first came out in 2012 as a replacement for the E93 series family. Throughout its seven year life, it went through a series of refreshes to keep it competing at the top of the compact exec class. Its replacement, the G23 series, might have moved the game on in a few key areas, but the old model still has so much going for it. The initial three series lineup consisted of a 320D diesel, the four cylinder petrol 328i, and the six cylinder 335i. Then came the muscular six-cylinder 330 diesel and an entry-level 320i petrol. Fuel efficiency and low emissions became a big deal throughout the F30's life, which saw first the active hybrid petrol-electric model released and then later a plug-in hybrid option too. Higher up the range, it's possible to benefit from BMW's X-Drive four-wheel drive system. A more practical option was offered in the handsome shape of the 3 Series Touring. The estate model increases boot space from the saloon's 480 litres to 495, and while that doesn't sound like a big jump, it's the large boot opening and the low lip which really help to boost practicality. Over time, the diesel engine range expanded with more economical 316D and 318D models, and there was a new petrol unit to kick off the range in the 316i. In 2013, the 325D was introduced, at the same time that DAB digital radio became a standard feature on all models. For most people, the 320D is all the car you'll ever really need. It's refined, gives great performance and is really fuel efficient too. If you only want to do shorter journeys though, we reckon one of the smaller petrols is a better bet. If you're more in a hurry, then take a look at the 335i or its replacement, the 340i. 340 packs 322 brake horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque, giving it true hot hatch speed in a very understated package. You don't have to be understated though, because there is of course, the thunderous M3. The F80 ditched the E90's V8 for a smaller twin turbo 3 litre straight 6, but it got faster and even more rounded, but stayed just as leery. Clearly then, it's not just the straights where the 3 series shines. One area where BMW has always knocked its rivals for 6 is in the chassis tube few cars of this type manage to be so brilliant through the corners, which makes the above average comfort and refinement all the more impressive. No matter which version you go for, kit levels are pretty generous. Alloy wheels, aircon and Bluetooth are standard throughout the range, while SE models add rear parking sensors, climate control and automatic lights and wipers. Sport models got some cosmetic tweaks and more heavily bolstered front seats, modern and luxury trims sat higher up the range with extra goodies of their own, while the M Sport gives buyers just a small flavour of the M3 thanks to a body kit and a firmer suspension tune. All of these strengths mean that it shouldn't come as a surprise to learn that BMW shifted huge numbers of the F30 over its seven year life. That means that used car buyers are spoiled for choice, with a widespread of models across a huge range of prices. For the latest deals on the BMW 3 Series, click on the link below this video to head over to buyacar.co.uk where you can find your ideal 3 Series among a choice of thousands, discover the best price and apply for low rate finance all in minutes. The car will be delivered to your door with a 14 day money back guarantee. Buying a car has never been so easy. So if you do go ahead and buy a 3 Series, what things should you look out for? Well, one of the flip sides of a hard wearing interior is that it can hide its miles rather well. A digital odometer means that it's possible for dodgy sellers to clock the mileage, so if it looks like an example you're chasing has covered a suspiciously small distance in its life, it's best to cross-reference with previous MOT documents. For proper peace of mind, pay for a diagnostic check, which will spot any shenanigans easily. 
Elsewhere, the Bluetooth system can be a bit temperamental when it comes to syncing phone data and squeaky seats mean that the frames might have started to corrode. As a general rule, the 3 Series range usually goes for about 18,000 miles or two years before the onboard computer will start pestering you for maintenance. If you do a lot of stop-start town driving, we suggest taking it in for work a little more often. When it was new, many buyers took up BMW's offer of a 5-year, 50,000 mile service package. Once it's past that age or mileage, services from the standard main dealers will cost between £250 to £400. The brake fluid should be flushed every 3 years or so, which would set you back another £100. All 3 Series engines are fitted with a timing chain, so unlike some rivals, no expensive cam belt changes are needed. But what of those rivals? The most obvious competition comes from the Audi A4 and the Mercedes C-Class, but those looking for something a little different should think about the Lexus IS too, as it constantly tops the Auto Express driver power satisfaction surveys in this segment. If a premium badge doesn't matter to you, then try out the Skoda Superb or the Mazda 6. They trump the BMW on space, though neither can quite offer such a strong engine lineup. And that's the thing about the 3 Series. There are some cars which might just edge it in some small areas, but as an overall package, it makes for a brilliant used buy. But what do you think? Have you ever owned a 3 Series? And which is your favourite generation? Let us know in the comments below.